broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Nearly at the halfway mark of this second lockdown Melbourne and one week of masking up in Melbourne. The streets and parks are becoming emptier as Melburnians appear to be staying inside as day after day Premier Dan Andrews through his daily press conference announces more new cases and deaths uh, of coronavirus during this second wave. Up to this point Premier Dan Andrews and the mainstream media have blamed uh, so-called art anti-maskers and COVID idiots, plus a complacent public for Victoria's second coronavirus wave, but it's now becoming clear uh, that uh, it's been started off with the quarantine breaches uh, at the hotel. Uh, then we've had health professionals becoming infected. Uh, it's been revealed lax PPE standards at aged care facilities, outbreaks in essential workplaces such as meat works and warehouses, plus various government failures through poor contact tracing that has now been spreading uh, the virus throughout Melbourne and leading to the daily death toll. Uh, my first featured guest uh, is Lance Simon, known on Facebook as Lucky Lance. He is host of the Warfare podcast, which features uh, his commentary and interviews on true crime, uh, combat sports, gym and music during Melbourne's second wave and lockdown. The, uh, the mainstream media have been hyping the fears about overwhelmed hospitals and ICU wards. Lance has copped a lot of hate for exposing uh, that this is fake news. Uh, since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, Lance has highlighted the costs of the lockdown on individual businesses and other health crises it is causing on the side. Uh, Lance is based uh, here in Melbourne and he is my guest, guest tonight. Lance, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. That was a good intro, mate. You're good at this. You're better than me. Yeah, well, I, I, I like to think so after after doing this uh, for many years, as they say, practice uh, makes perfect. Now, obviously, uh, you've uh, I introduced your warfare uh, podcast, which uh, you began thanks, mate, early, thanks early earlier this year, which obviously started in with a different array of uh, topics to what we're discussing tonight. Yeah, the, the Warfare podcast is uh, it's been heaps of fun meeting new people, people that I wouldn't usually speak to, rappers and and um, people like that. And um, so it's just for, for a laugh, it's entertainment purposes, but we're hoping to cheekily sneak in some um, socially responsible messages in there as well, which we have, so so that something uh, positive comes out of it. But it's, yeah, besides that, it's just a bit of fun, meet new people and see where it takes us. And I really enjoy it. That's the baby. It's a warfare podcast. We're hoping it goes somewhere one day. And um, in terms of the videos on Facebook, that's um, it's a lot of fun, heaps of fun. And I've made a lot of friends and and enemies, and I uh, really enjoy it. But that's not it's not something of great importance to me. You know, I assume I'll, I don't know if you've seen my videos, but I'm pretty sure I'll be getting banned from Facebook in no time. <laughs> well, I'm noticing a lot of the, I'm not sure if you've ever chatted to any of the, the 99% uh, Unite uh, admins and, and leaders, but they lost uh, another Facebook group today, the, the 99 Worldwide Unite. They lost their, their main group. I'm sort of, and when I say this, I'm not saying I approve of it, but I'm surprised Facebook has sort of taken this long to sort of act on these, uh, or as they're calling them now, uh, cr uh, virus uh, deniers. And with the, the mask mandate, uh, they're, they're calling them anti-maskers and or a, a more crude one they came, uh, uh, came up with was mask holes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, so, um, oh, the message is getting lost. You know, there is a, uh, yeah, I'm a corona skeptic and there's a good reason to be skeptical. There's plenty of valid information out there that will lead you to be skeptical of the, the way the media are portraying it and the government are reacting. But you see the, uh, the anti-maskers and that, they're crazies, you know, they're absolute, you know, they're nut jobs and some of the things they're saying are ridiculous. And so it just, uh, what do you call it? So then what's happening there, what I found is, so if I just preach some stats, you know, I look up some stats off some reputable uh, sites, you know, world meters, things like that. And all I'm saying is, I'm not saying Corona is a myth. I may sometimes use that terminology to illustrate my point, you know, so I'm guilty of exaggerating a little bit. So, it, which is really ironic because I, 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 um, 
I uh, criticise the media for exaggerating their story, and uh, so that annoys me that the media exaggerate and, and manipulate and catastrophise their story. And then I found that I'm actually guilty of that myself, so I'm a bloody huge hypocrite there. But I'm trying to illustrate a point, and sometimes you, your words get a bit carried away with you when you're trying to illustrate a point. So what I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a real thing and people aren't dying and, pe and the, you know, the biggest hit would be the economy. But if you look up, you know, world meters and, and look up other stock, you know, statistics, and then you look at the deaths from corona, you, you become sceptical of why we're decimating the economy and small business with, you know, such, when it's such low, low um, percentages of deaths and, and, and illness compared to so many other things, cancer, starvation, starvation kills millions every year. You know, and it go, well, I won't go on, but it goes on and on and on. So it's just, I'm a skeptic, you know. But then, so that gets lost because you got these nut jobs on the news, you know, arguing with police, arguing with the staff at Bunnings about the mask and it's not lawful and whatnot. And so then you get thrown in the same barrel as these these nut jobs, you know. Uh, so I've seen some comments uh, yesterday. People call me a tin foil hat wearing person, and. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's hilarious. I just heard that. That is actually pretty funny. So I went and made a tinfoil hat and made a video, <laughs> made fun of it, you know. Yeah, I, I saw that one. You were at uh, Woolies uh, there, which uh, they are one of the, the the retailers where if somebody comes in with a mask, they they won't say anything. You you uh, you run the risk of getting some greasy looks and maybe uh, somebody making an abusive another customer making an abusive comment to you. But the reason why you saw those two. Uh, ladies who are referred to as the Bunnings Karens, I, I go to uh, Bunnings there is because they had a strict no masks, no entry policy, which of course was, uh, I when I first heard about it, I was sort of like, that's where the confrontations are, are going to be. And I, the, the staff at Bunnings, they shouldn't be expected to be police officers and uh, enforce this. And there was a lot of leading up to the the face covering mandate. There was a lot of uh, contradictory information on the uh, Department of Health and Human Services website here in Victoria. But it's made clear now that shop assistants aren't expected to be police officers. Neither are the supermarkets. If somebody is not wearing a mask inside the supermarket, the onus is on on them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They're not police. But the thing is that Bunnings has the people are saying Bunnings is not a public place the Bunnings is that's their business and they don't have to have you in they can kick you out for any reason you know what I mean it's their shop mm. it's not a the lady saying it's a public place it is not a public place it's a Bunnings store you know if you come into my bookstore and I don't want you there for any reason whether it's fair or not I don't have to have you there you know so to complain to Bunnings you know it's 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 not the law it's not the state library it's their it's their business and they don't have to have anyone in there they don't want in there no one has a right to be in Bunnings, you know what I mean? That's their store. So, and if their policy is to wear a mask, then that's their policy, you know. Um, and they say, that, you know, they have a go at the staff and sit there preaching, preaching the law, which they don't understand anyway, either of them. Um, it's a little bit ridiculous. And at the same time, to the Bunnings staff, um, you know, the world's gone a little bit crazy We're in a in a pandemic, um, and you, you're going to cop a bit of flack from some crazies and just Take it on the chin. Don't let it get to you. And um, you know, like you're one of the lucky ones. You still got your job. Some people lost their jobs. You still got a job. And if you have to deal with a few Karens annoying you, just water off a duck's back. Don't let it get to you. You know, um, that's what I'd say to the staff. Don't take it personally. You got some crazies out there. You know, so and it's good that you still got a job. You know, so um, but uh, yeah, you, it, it's a it's a funny it's a funny one. It's a funny one. I've seen a lot of people preaching that it's not law, not lawful for the police to enforce you, uh, you know, enforce the mask and give you fines. So luckily I'm married to a lawyer. I asked her and she explained me the law. And uh, yeah, surely is lawful. Definitely is lawful. Yeah. Uh, 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 firm Guard Wilson Lawyers sponsors uh, your your show on the, on the banners uh, behind you there. So uh, you are uh, obviously versed uh, in, in the law and it comes from the, it, the these powers it comes from the the public health and well-being act 2008 and if, even though because we're in a state of emergency yeah. the government to, to enact 
mm. wars but it do, that yeah out. it does concern me that there has well since 2008 nobody is aware of it that there has been these sweeping powers that a a bureaucrat can direct which can affect people's lives so much so it may be lawful uh, but certainly that amount of power to shake up well Vic the state of victoria so much that's that's still deeply concerning in my opinion yeah that's a that's an interesting point. I, to be honest, I, I'm not sure what to think about that myself. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not not an academic. But um, you know, I'm not too too worried. But I'm just thinking as a, as a person who, uh, as a as a Melbourneian who was used to a uh, six months ago coming and going to my house as I please, you no questions asked to well, you're only allowed out now for four lawful reasons and you have to wear a face covering unless you have a, what is that, lawful exemption or, or reasonable excuse. That's that's a pretty huge change change of life. Yeah, it's t a lot of people find that hard to adjust to and that's understandable. You've gone, especially for the, especially for law-abiding citizens, you know, that have gone and played by the rules their whole life and not broken the law. The good people and now so they've done everything right the whole life and now they're being told um you can't do this and you can't do that and you, and you, you know you got all these additional rules they're finding it hard to adjust to uh, and then people that you know that don't follow the rules that just uh do what they want when they want those type of people we're just laughing at it you know because i'm out all night i'm just living the same as i did before i haven't made any changes in my lifestyle whatsoever um so to someone like me it's um it's a, yeah, it's not even. It's not like it's not even real. But the people that abide by the rules, you know, they they they're struggling. You know, they they have these additional rules forced on them, especially when they've gone the whole life um, being good people and doing the right thing, and then to have these restrictions, they're finding it hard. And that's human nature, I suppose. That's what you're going to get. That's going to happen, you know. But it's not. It's not. Some people are really outraged. I mean, you know, the the mask. I mean, tradesmen wear those masks their whole career on a building site. You know, so we're. The government are asking people to wear them. It's, you know, I don't. I don't know if it's that. I mean, um, it's not so. Uh, what's the word? It's not traumatic. You know, it's annoying. The, the where it's excessive for me is the fact that you have to wear it when you're you're just walking or or wa walking the dog. Uh, are you the you're only allowed to not wear the mask if you're doing strenuous exercise like uh, yeah, uh, yeah, run uh, yeah. uh, running or or cycling and i know that when i've uh, left the house uh, for for exercise just breathing the fresh air is is is, 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 is that helps me uh, just as much as the actual a uh, walk uh, itself and in the whole stay at home, stay inside, and there's been a lot of talk about I, I, uh, people not eating well uh, during this lockdown. I, I've, I've jokingly referred to, to lockdown love handles. And if we're, <laughs> if we're, if we're becoming unhealthy at, at home, and this is supposed to be about public health, I mean, exercise because the gyms have been shut again, uh, being outside in nature, the natural fresh air, the vitamin D from the sunlight, that uh, that helps build the immune system. The immune system. That's right. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Yeah, that is an interesting point. Uh, I, um, look, I, I'll be honest, I've made videos of making fun of the mask but i've kind of changed my tune a bit because i don't want to i can see people already you know skeptical skeptical about the mask enough and they're fighting it and so i don't really want to add fuel to that fire anymore i can see it's going pretty crazy but but yeah honestly from my research the corona particles are 500 times smaller than the holes in the mask making the mask frivolous although that the mask is um will stop droplets getting it but that's i mean i mean how often have you coughed on someone's face and a piece of spit went on their face. How many times in your life has that happened to you? you well, it's, it's it's hard to. I, I I have had people cough on me uncovered, but these droplets there, you can't always always see them. Obviously, when someone has has a a runny nose, and I won't get into that. The, the snots hanging out. I'm getting a bit graphic here. That's clearly a droplet, but they're not always that obviously seen. 
Small, small droplets, yeah, but you'd have to cough directly at somebody at their face, you know, so I, I can't imagine that happens too often. So, you know, the mask may or may not help. Um, you know, they, maybe they're doing whatever they can, but I, I suspect, look, I don't really know. I don't think anyone really knows, but I suspect the government's uh, motivation is that when you know, the death toll rises, they don't want to be blamed for it because the government's main prerogative is their, is next election. And let's face it, they're worried about getting voted in the next election and doing and saying things and making uh, decisions that will will help them win the next election. So if the corona statistics go through the roof and, you know, lots of people die, they don't want to be to blame that they didn't put in enough safety measures. So they, they're thinking we put in lots and lots of measures so we can't be blamed later. You know what I mean? So that's people in power they're worried about the backlash later for their decisions now. So if that means if that means going above and beyond or going over the top and doing things they don't need to to save their skin later, then they'll do it, whether it's effective or not. You know, um, same with the same with the judge in court. You know, they don't like to give um, family violence offenders they don't like to even bail anymore because if that person happens to kill his wife. Uh, while on bail, that magistrate will be criticised in the papers for giving him bail. So people are, you know, people in positions of power are thinking about the future and how it's going to look. You know what I mean? So that's their motivations. You've got to think about that. So I mean, they 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 might have no evidence that the mask will help, but it looks good that they put the measures in place because they can say later we made masks mandatory and we did all these measures to save everyone. And then if the um, and if the numbers come, if the numbers don't come down well they can they'll later they'll say it's because because of the measures we put in place so if there's success they, they can be you know they can attribute to that to the measures they put in place with the masks you see you know they've got a different motivation compared to just caring about our health and safety you know they've got other motivations they've got careers and elections to worry about you know so 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 it's fair enough to be skeptical if that's the case i don't know what do you think tim well I agree with your point there that uh, they want to be seen to be as doing as much as possible, which uh, leads to absurd restrictions. Like, and you can see it with the the first lockdown when uh, golf, fishing, and and surfing those recreational activities were were banned. Yet in the the second Thanks. lockdown, uh, they're not. And so far, there's been no uh, coronavirus cases traced to golf or surfing or fishing uh, but with the you you just went through the the the, the fact that the 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 masks uh, they, they they certainly don't make you uh, uh bulletproof against the coronavirus but it's more just this symbolism of uh, that it, it look it looks like uh, the the government is taking an extra step and uh, we've seen uh, uh, since uh, this uh, stage three lockdown was was reimposed on greater melbourne the, the mainstream media asking daniel andrews every day oh when are we going to stage four Can't, you know shouldn't we go to to stage four and that and then when the mask mandate came in face covering mandate he said oh it essentially is our our stage four so he said that as basically a way to uh, to to shut up the media because Daniel Andrews already, uh, it, by having the, the, the strictest and longest first lockdown, uh, that decimated the uh, Victorian economy immensely. And yep. a stage four restriction where you shut, well, Bunnings, McDonald's, JB Hi-Fi, all those things, that would have an even more devastating effect on on the economy which uh he knows as well but i've actually noticed with uh, a side effect of this mask mandate is i'm not sure if this was the intention i don't think governments are this smart to uh, be able to read human behavior but people just don't they can't be bothered going outside anymore because they don't want to put the mask on the streets are much more deserted now the the shops are as well yeah, I don't. I don't wear the mask at all. People are worried that they can't. They're going to get in trouble for not wearing the mask. But um, I walk, I'm out all day long with the shops. I'm everywhere. I don't wear a mask. I have one on me um, in case the shopkeeper tell, has a go at me. I don't want to get in a fight with anyone. And um, uh, but I'll have one in my pocket. Probably got one on me now. But um, here we go. I keep one on me yeah. just um, 
because I don't want to get into a fight with the, with the public, so I have one. Um, but I don't wear it, and the police, I don't know. I see police, they don't say anything to me. So um, it's, uh, look, you're not going to walk outside your house and police and SWAT team are going to come and grab you. You can, you know, but um, keep one on you in case you go to the shops and you have to put one on. But I've been getting around everywhere with no mask on and no one said anything to me. Uh, at Bunnings, they insist I wear one at Bunnings, so I put it on. And um, yeah, but it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's a 200 dollars fine. And if you, if you're really a staunch anti-masker, I mean, you could, if you look up on the, I looked up, I printed out all the excuses. It was laughable. This is, I think on the DHS website, there's um, uh, two pages of excuses that I printed out. I... Really funny ones too, like can't breathe properly and don't like it. <laughs> it was pretty funny uh, excuses. But, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Although you really wouldn't want to be sitting there arguing with the police, you know, uh, giving them a hard time. Probably not going to go well. Mm. Asthma. Yeah, so I've heard people are going and getting asthma pumps, buying asthma pumps and keeping them on them so they can just show their asthma pump. I think... So, have you heard of that trick? Yeah, I, I have heard of that. But it does it because obviously the $200 fine, it's significantly lower than the... Uh, $1,652 fine for uh, breaching the uh, cor uh, coronavirus restrictions works out to about 12% of, 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 of that fine. But I'm finding it's more the, the, the uh, people are wearing it socially uh, for social reasons now. They, 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 they just don't want to cop it from other people. It's not that they think that the, the police are going to be around the... Uh, the corner, but uh, going back to the Karen, Karens from Bunnings, there are oh, also yeah, the, 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 the pro mass Karens. I'm not sure if you've seen some of the footage of the, the United States where uh, pe uh, uh, people are getting berated for not wearing a, a mask. Yeah. And the most ironic thing about that is the pro mask people, they sometimes uh, pull down their mask so they can s give a spray to the anti-masker and they're probably spreading droplets and they're also breaching the social distancing themselves oh, it's funny man this has been an interesting experience you know this is something we'll go down in history we'll, we'll be telling our grandkids about this it's pretty funny how the human beings have all reacted in all the different ways like how you're suggesting it's funny it's, it's very interesting to see the extremes you know i've got a friend who's got a business um he's got a factory and he's got a policy no masks he doesn't let anyone in with a mask because he's against the mask so much, you know, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious, you know, he's not, he's telling people, no, you're not wearing a mask, you know, which is the complete opposite of the norm. <laughs> I found that hilarious. He's telling people, no, leave your fucking mask in the car, fuck your mask, you know, so that, that's, uh, that's pretty funny, you know, but you see, there seems to be people that you're either extremist on one side or the other. <laughs> I don't know who's in between. Well, that's certainly uh, what we've seen uh, more openly over in, over in the US. Uh, we have seen a bit of it here with the the mask mandate here in Melbourne, but nowhere near what you sort of see over in the uh, the US. Uh, but it certainly is is it is legitimate to question how come during the first wave we weren't healthy people weren't recommended to wear a mask. Now suddenly it's it, it, it's a uh, a lifesaver and I've noticed that uh, when I'm out shopping that the uh, side effect of the 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 mask uh, people wearing the mask is they're not as conscious of the social distancing now which actually you look at the uh, the medical advice social distancing is the most effective more way more effective than masks get people and and this is the annoying thing about the what well, it's it always gets filtered through the mainstream media they uh, they've been trying to scare people shitless uh, throughout this entire uh, oh, pandemic they, and tried and tried and succeeded <laughs> but it, even the uh, communicating the the new when they com communicate the new rules and uh, medical advice uh, to uh, the public uh, the the public get confused i mean for uh, people think that this lockdown means you can't go to the next suburb to exercise uh, 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 
uh, they think that's a breach of lockdown, even though Daniel Andrews said that, no, that's it, 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 the actual, what is that state of emergency says unreasonable travel. And the examples that he's used is, what is it, traveling from Coburg to Rye to uh, go fishing, which obviously that's quite a while from Coburg in the inner north to Rye on the Mornington Peninsula. That's not yeah. the next suburb. Yeah, yeah, right, right. That's... Um... But you could, you could, you could drive from Coburg to Rye and go fishing. I mean, who's going to stop you? you? You know, just go there and go on the pier and fish with the other guys. There's no, there's no SWAT teams out there. You know, you could, you could do that. It's no problem. And, uh, so you it's, if up. you do get uh, pulled over, then it's uh, and, and this is the other thing that it's up to the police officer's discretion about whether you've engaged in unreasonable travel, which is what I haven't liked as, as well, obviously. Uh, you, you, you know the, the law. It's a, it's a funny thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, because it basically reverses the onus <laughs> of proof. You have to prove to me uh, why you're not in breach, which is that's not how, that's not, that's not how what the foundations of our legal system is based on, where they, the state or prosecution has to prove as to prove beyond reasonable doubt that you've committed a offense or infringement yeah that that's a funny one well i mean that what there's no other way to do it they have to leave it up to the individual policeman's or policewoman's discretion and hopefully they use the common sense but they're human beings they're, they they can make mistakes um i've been pulled over four times in breach of uh, lockdown and um, I haven't been fined yet uh, but um, what do you call it uh, but what I found is when you're just polite to the police and honest with them but if you get confrontational with them and start reading them legislation and telling them some conspiracy theory that this is not lawful for you to enforce this and blah 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 so tell them that what they're doing is illegal and you know, the human beings, if you sit there and fuck with them, oh, sorry, um, if you sit there and mess with them, um, they're not going to use their discretion in your in your favour, are they? So I've been pulled over, what are you doing? And I'm just sort of driving around making funny videos. Well, you're meant to be home. Yeah, I know. And um, they're like, all right, just go home. And so every time they just let me go home, you know, so uh, they haven't get, I haven't been given the fine yet. But just be polite to them, be honest, what are you doing? Nothing really, got no excuse. And... Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not concerned with getting the fine. I haven't been fined to let me go. Yeah, so they've been, and they've been real nice. So the cops sort of pulled me over, been really nice to me. And I've been a bit nicer to them as well, because I know they're copping a lot of grief at the moment. You know, they pull people over and people sit there arguing, you know, you have no right, blah, blah, blah. So that's annoying for them. So I thought they don't need any more people to uh, frustrate them. So I'll be polite and they haven't given me the fine. So uh, if there's any cops that watch this, this, that might change next time I get pulled over, but <laughs> but so far I've been pulled over I think four or five times and they've they've um, they've let me go. So uh, and just told me just to you know just to head home. But you just be polite to them, be honest as well. Police love it when they love honesty. They that's their drug of choice, honesty. So often they get pull people over and people sit there making excuses and they've heard every excuse and it's disheartening to them. They'd be lied. They get lied to a million times a day, you know, and um, so. It's a breath of fresh air I found in my experience when you tell a cop, like a cop pulled me over the other night, I said, yeah, look, man, I'm in breach of lockdown. I've got no, I've got no valid excuse. And they're so, so shocked that you say that to them. Usually they have to pry that out of you. They're so shocked and then they, they're delighted and then they, they use their discretion in your, your favour and they, they, they cut you some slack, which is kind of nice. Um, so, yeah, it's funny how far niceness will get you and manners. We'll get you a long way. Yeah, that's that's interesting to to hear your encounters. Now, obviously, uh, we've seen uh, some of your uh, trips around to the various uh, hospitals around Melbourne because this. Oh, is you like, saw that? Yes, uh, and it, and it stemmed from. Uh, I'll I'll bring it up again. The uh, the what is it? Uh, Seven News and this. Uh, 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 footage from an ICU ward, which they didn't explicitly say, but implied was uh, in Victorian hospitals on This is a, this is a good example. This is a, sorry. 
And but that had been used uh, uh, by Sky News UK to say it was in an Italian hospital. Then CBS said it was a New York hospital. I don't know which hospital it actually is. But during that uh, that report, they said nurses were working uh, uh, twelve hour shifts, and uh, the 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 just the. Uh, a few days before they'd been busted seven news Doing perth that. yeah the the, the yeah. dummies on on ventilator so you decided to you started with yeah Frank and i'm getting hospital. and now i'm so it's okay for the mainstream media to do that disgusting type of manipulation um of a story and and then and then i'm copping flack for actually going to the hospital and i'm copying flack oh you're there at night or 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 you didn't do this or you didn't do that right. I'm like, I just fucking drove there on a whim and they're all empty. Every hospital I go to is empty. So, oh, but I didn't go at the right time. And it's like, but hang on, but you believe the mainstream media who, you know, the, you know I don't even know. What's a word to describe that? I mean, it's horrible, you know, to use those images to influence. Sensationalism is what we call yeah, it. To, well, it's, that's, that's been nice. I mean, it's really dishonest. It's, you know, it's, um, it's quite dishonest to put that picture in the background while you're telling a story and you don't really focus on it too much when you, as a viewer, but that, that picture in the background will, will, um, you know, give you a, will make you think that the situation is, is worse than it is. So that's really lying to the public, manipulating, you know, that's really, really dishonest. And then, um, so I go out to the hospital and film it and now everyone's saying I'm lying and it's like, hang on a minute. So you believe, these media channels that post what you just showed and me actually going there on a whim, oh, I'm being dishonest. It's like, geez, it, I'll tell you what, the mainstream media, they're clever, but they're smart people, they're doing a great job. They're doing a really, really good job. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're doing manipulation and lying and catastrophizing stories like that, you know, just dead set being dishonest, you know, bad people, and they're doing a fucking great job and everyone's believing it. So, you know, they're very clever people. They're doing a real good job. Good for them. You know, they're getting away with it, you know, and uh, it's working great. So they've achieved their goal. Well, they're, they're also desperate as well, desperate for people to watch watch them because of uh, uh, people such as myself and the alternate media and uh, the, the internet, they're losing lots of uh, eyeballs and therefore revenue. And this is why they've, been, they've wanted to scare people so much is to, to get people watching them again and obviously they they're the ones who still have access to the the, the premier's press conferences uh, and that so they're 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 always going to sort of run the uh the government line as well but uh, the, the since uh, you've uh, visited uh, i think you visited three hospitals now uh you started getting a lot of threatening and abusive messages from so-called health professionals claiming that you've insulted them and they've reported you to the was it corona squad or, or something and police will, oh, will uh, soon be in contact yeah, yeah. yeah i got a lot of threats uh, threats against to my children and all sorts of things and uh so i don't get too upset about that i mean that's part of it you put yourself out on the internet you've got to take the good with the bad and it's pretty confusing i've had a lot of alleged Healthcare workers, nurses contact me, um, lots and lots, and I'm getting mixed messages. So some, um, some nurses, and look, yeah, it could be anybody, but I suspect the people that are claiming they're nurses are nurses because they, they're talking a lot of the lingo that only a healthcare worker would know. So I assume they're truthful. But anyway, so I've got a lot uh, contacted by a few, and some are saying, no, 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 you know, you're wrong and you're being dishonest, and we're busier than ever type of type of narrative and then i got a lot also telling me yeah yeah it's it's um it is quiet and it is the news are exaggerating so so i've got some nurses for me and against me and i don't know what that means so i've got nurses agreeing with me and then i've got nurses disagreeing with me and um i really don't know what that means you know so maybe 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 depending on the, the hospital you're in or depending on which section of the hospital you work at um would depend on um you know whether they're working more or less, whether they've got more work on or less work on. So some nurses apparently have been taking their annual leave because it's quiet, no elective surgery. Um, but I went to one, two, 
three, four. I went, I've been to, and I went to another one in Frankston. I went to one that was so empty I didn't even bother filming, and, and, but it was a private hospital, so I thought I'd get a cop flack for that. Went to a couple of private hospitals and I didn't bother to film because I realised people would uh, cop a lot of flack. But every hospital I've been to, it's been extremely quiet. But the one was uh, that stood out the most was the Alfred. Now, the Alfred uh, is usually on a weekend. Is, in my experience, is usually very busy in emergency because um, you've got, you know, you've got Chapel Street down there and you've got people, uh, assault victims from the clubs and pubs and, and drug overdoses and alcohol poisoning. So whenever I've been there on a Saturday or Sunday night, it's usually very busy. Um, and because the clubs, pubs and clubs are closed, so, so I went there and I, I've never seen it that quiet in my whole life, you know. Um, so um, I just thought, you know, I didn't go to ICU. I don't know how many people were in ICU there with, with COVID. Well, so I'm not oh. saying that, but, I, but it's just interesting that the news are saying that they're under the pump and showing footage of what, like what you just showed me. And then when you actually drive there yourself, it's never been so quiet. So I'm just wanted to illustrate that point because no one else is, you know. So I thought it's important to show that, show the different perspective, the other side of it. Well, if you look at uh, t uh, today's numbers uh, from the the DHS website, so 307 cases of coronavirus are in hospital and 41 are in intensive care. The intensive care has actually gone gone down. I think from uh, yesterday it was it was forty two. Yesterday, uh, this is going by the Department of Health website, which is a day behind. But the reason why it went over three hundred coronavirus cases being admitted to hospital is because they've moved some of the aged care residents, which. Uh, it, it, that is the, the the genuine heartbreaking thing about this second wave that it's gone into the the aged care uh, facilities and the the, the yeah. failures uh, that ha have already been revealed about uh, PPE uh, not uh, uh, not being uh, uh, worn up until uh, uh, or being compulsory until. Uh, very recently, that's uh, that's why the case hospital cases uh, three hundred seven today, but it's and if we have a look here, that uh, there's there's just under if we go here uh, four thousand eight hundred thirty nine uh, active cases, which is actually down from the uh, nine uh, four thousand nine hundred ninety five active cases the day before. So people are, are recovering, but the, the number linked to aged care keeps going up 804 and uh, the total number of, of healthcare workers that uh, are have been infected as well is is 502. So it's clear that this sort of uh, hectoring and lecturing that Dan Andrews has, has done of uh, tutting Victorians not and not doing the right thing it's it's clear that uh, Victorians are, it's, it, it seems that it, it's now the, the aged care facilities and the various aspects of the, the health system, it's, it's now up to them to, to make sure that uh, people who've got the coronavirus and they're in charge of, of quarantining, that uh, they're, they're, they're not spreading the virus as well, especially to the most vulnerable. That seems to be the, I would say the ball is in their court now. Yeah, the aged care facilities, that's a that's a tough one, you know, because it, um, the elderly are the most vulnerable to the to the COVID-19, so they're vulnerable. Old people and people with weakened immune systems are vulnerable. And um, so I don't know what else they could have done. It's not for me to judge the government, I suppose, on that. I don't, I don't know. And um, actually, my mother works in aged care and uh, she's been working mostly from home over the computer, but uh, no, I'm not sure what they should be doing there. And, uh, you know, yeah, old people are vulnerable, there, but, you know, and people with weakened immune system, but those old, same old people, you know, uh, I'll take a risk saying this, but had they got pneumonia or the flu or a lot of other things, they'd also die, you know? And uh, so, we, yeah, I mean, uh, what country was it where they just locked down the, old, the elderly? They just locked down the elderly and people with asthma and let the rest of the country 
going back to their business. That seemed like a pretty clever move, just to lock down the bond rule. Well, uh, Sweden pretty. is the the, the model Sweden. where they yeah they didn't lock down their economy uh, and and businesses, and even though they had more a higher death rate at the beginning, their their death curve has continued to go down. If you if you keep Australia's uh, uh, coronavirus tally in perspective, where 132nd in the in the world when it comes to death deaths per one million population, so we're still doing pretty good. Obviously, every death is still a tragedy. And what breaks my heart about the aged care deaths because of well, because the well, the aged care homes are. Uh, supposedly uh, have stricter lockdown that it's meant that a, a lot of uh, families haven't been able to say goodbye to their loved ones and that uh, there's reports come out of that St. Basil's ones that some family haven't even been informed that their loved ones are, are close to, 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 to death and we still have the restrictions on limits on funerals to 10 people as well so it you'd say it's even a triple whammy if you lose lose a relative in aged care at this time yeah that's really sad that is really sad and um well it's sad but that's what that's that's it is what it is we're in the middle of a of a of a virus that kills old people and um and um it's nothing new at aged care facilities you know they have you go to any aged care facility they've got a they got hearses turning up there on a regular basis, you know. People are in there, not when they're young, fit and healthy. People are in there when they're when they're getting towards the end. And uh, I take every saying that too, you know. So, and uh, you know, when I say you know the, the old people that died from Corona also would have died from the flu or pneumonia, what of other things? People were really upset about that. How would you? How dare you? What was your grandmother? Well, we had uh, nine hundred Australians die from the flu last winter. That it was a a literal killer flu season when they've had was it 36 deaths from the flu this a uh, uh, winter as well so overall we're clearly uh, if you combine flu deaths with coronavirus deaths well and truly uh, under that that 900 figure but then have we caused uh, more deaths elsewhere uh, through or suicide. suicides or uh, a lot of people have talked about domestic violence during this time because there's a lot of people who uh, have either been stood down lost their jobs uh, businesses gone to uh, uh, the wall and also the fact the uh, just isolation as well being away from uh, uh, legally having to be away from friends and family it it's uh, that's not good for for people as well and no amount of mental health funding will sort of rectify that at this time isn't it really interesting tim um you know that's really interesting you know uh, people that are really hysterical about corona uh people that are fanatics about corona really really think it's the worst thing ever they can't remember you know ebola and spanish flu they can't they don't know about them or they don't, they don't remember but the people that are really fanatical, they they must have no idea of the death rate of every other cause of death in Australia. They just mustn't have a clue, you know, because if you did, if you were aware of all the other deaths, you know, especially at the same time, you might not be as hysterical about the deaths from corona, you know. And then if you were one to, and then when you were on the internet, if you if people are preaching about you know the deaths from the corona and you mention just mention the deaths from the flu or car accidents or, or suicide if you mention that you straight away get bashed that you that you're being skeptical of corona you know and you get attacked online by a lot of people and a lot of people agree with you but a lot of people attack you so there's people that attack you when you just merely and i you know be polite merely bring up alternative statistics you know and um well not alternative statistics but just other statistics of other causes of death if you just bring them up, you're bashed for, for, for you know, you call the tinfoil hat wearing. Yeah, or uncaring. Yeah. Uncaring. And it's like, well, that's really not, that's not very smart. Let's, you know, have your opinion, but be aware of all the facts and all the deaths and put it into perspective. Let's all put it into perspective and be reasonable people. And the media don't help this. The media don't help this because if the media, when they put their report of how many people died of corona this week, how they put the, put a chart of every death of every cause, 
uh, let people, you know, let people put it into perspective. And, you know, we'll still take corona seriously, but just be aware that you know, some people think that the only thing you can die from in this day and age is corona. You know, some people sort of believe something along the lines of what I just said. So it's pretty funny. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's just very strange to me, you know. Uh, but I suppose with the media, they don't want to be complacent also, you know. So if they were to, when they put the deaths from corona this week, if they also listed on their screen every other death from cancer, you know, the flu, car accident, suicide, if they put it charted at all, people would see that chart and then it's because, you know, the average person is a bit, no, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying. Um, so the average person is easily influenced, you know, so we, we just put the corona deaths right, they're freaking out about corona. At the same time, if we put in a chart with all the deaths from corona and then every other cause, every other death, people would then probably be very complacent about corona once they said, they, like so some dumb people would be like, oh, what are we worried about? You know, it's only 2% of all the deaths. No big deal. And then those people would be complacent and stop wearing their masks and stop distancing and not give a shit. So I suppose the media don't want to be, they don't want to be too honest because the people watching are so stupid will then be complacent and not take corona seriously. And they want you to take it seriously and, um, and everyone protect themselves. Uh, you're implying that the media uh, is trying to be responsible. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty weird what I've just said. But mm. you, you, you see what, you catch my drift? I do, and but this is why I I always uh, compare the uh, the coronavirus to the flu. I know that they're 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 not the same, and when I say it's just like the flu, I'm not diminishing it. Uh, but there there are the reason why we probably had a killer flu season last year is because people probably were getting lax with with hygiene and that, not washing hands. Uh, constantly and 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 maybe coughing and then shaking hands with people, which you wouldn't do that now. Uh, so, so there are uh, good habits that that people have, have picked up during this uh, uh, during this this pandemic, which will just keep them healthier. Uh, period. But I would disagree that uh, when this is over, uh, people are just suddenly going to to disregard it because. Melburnians, they're, we're, we're halfway tomorrow, we're, we're still around about the 300 active case, uh, uh, case mark. Uh, uh, a lot of people are wondering whether the lockdown is going to be extended. Uh, how long can we live uh, uh, like this? Uh, do we need to consider that we're just going to have to, to live uh, with the virus and better manage outbreaks? Uh, we, we we see today that uh, Qu uh, Queensland they they shut their their border with uh, uh, Greater Sydney siders. Uh, everyone's the media's been hyping up their apparent second wave. All their cases have still been in the in the teens today. So their second wave is a massive uh, uh, media beat up there. Uh, so you've sort of got to how long is this going to go on for? Because Let's talk about suppression and elimination. To eliminate the virus, you'd have to keep basically the world uh, locked up forever. Yeah, that's right. And then you, yeah, you you would have read about talk of uh, herd immunity is another another option. You know, without the lockdowns, and we may all gain an immunity. And uh, and uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know what the government doesn't know what the answers are. I don't know what the answers are. And, uh, but I'll I'll call out things that I see that it you know uh, that make sense. Mm. It's, it's call me a skeptic if you like. And uh, yeah, it is really it's interesting times. Yeah, pretty funny. When uh, we do uh, eventually, because when we get to, to Melbourne Spring and, and summer, well that. Uh, fries uh, fries the the seasonal flu. It uh, will likely fry uh, uh, the coronavirus down to oh, very manageable levels. But we do need to have a a, a conversation about because there are going to be new viruses. Uh, just what approach is is the best? Because none of us want to go through just the trauma of the lockdown itself uh, again. Yeah, that's right. Hey, what's your thoughts? I wanted to ask you. What's your thoughts? So, so the the flu kills a lot of people every year consistently. 
I think, uh, what is it, 3,000 a year, the flu kills? And is that right? Um, EE talking about... The the seasonal flu. Seasonal flu. I know that it, it was 900, 900 in Australia last year. Uh, the worst it's been in Australia was the winter of 20, uh, 2017. That was 1,100 who died from the flu then. 1,100. So, um, and now, so the, the, the deaths from the, the flu rate has dropped. So I see a lot of people online saying that they're, you know, stealing the figures, putting deaths from, um, putting deaths from the flu as corona so i heard that i heard that accusation a lot online uh, i don't I, I don't have a clue if that's true or not i couldn't imagine well, i mean i can't you know i can't imagine what motivation the doctors in melbourne hospitals would have to do that but um but i don't know but it okay it could be that the um so i think you were alluding to that it could be that the death from the flu rate is down because people are staying home and wearing masks and Oh, and just washing, wash, washing their hands and sanitizing their hands. Uh, uh, just not being as, as sloppy as uh, uh, they were last winter with the, the, the yeah, flu well, season. Last year, last, year, last year, not one person would have done, put any measures in place to avoid getting the flu, would they? No. <laughs> yeah, so we could have less. Yeah, so that might explain why we've got less, less deaths from the flu. Uh, that's, that's the most logical answer. But... Um, so, you know, with the flu killing that many, how can we never had any measures like this in place for the flu season? Because the flu is with us the, every winter. The, the reason why there was all this hysteria when uh, the, the coronavirus was peaking at the, the end of March is because we still didn't know a lot about the virus because it was, it was born in Wuhan, China, and most of us know not to trust that regime and what comes out of it because it was a new virus from a secretive part of the world we didn't know how much damage it could do and we always fear what we what we do not know and we didn't know back in in march whether it was going to this is why the, the initial lockdown uh, was implemented to flatten the curve just so it wouldn't spiral out of control and our hospitals and ICU wards weren't going to be overwhelmed, which has not happened at all. So that's why we reacted the way, way uh, that, that uh, we did. And that's why there were all those panic buying over toilet paper and all that other stuff, because people, there were so many unknowns. Yeah, 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 the panic buying was funny. Mm. That was a funny one. I made a I made a viral video in Safeway, and uh, got taken down there. Got taken down because I was making fun of people for buying the toilet paper, and uh, that got taken down. But um, what do you call it? Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, there's a so I've been reading, and uh, apparently there's a bioweapons facility in in Wuhan. Yes, that's been well established. Facility. And uh, so I keep saying apparently because I just I know people are gonna are gonna are gonna question me and and diss everything I say. So I'm trying to sit on the fence. But yeah, so apparently Bill Gates is heavily heavily invested in the bioweapons bioweapons uh, facility um, in Wuhan. I don't know about uh, Bill Gates um, having a, a a stake in that, but I do know that there was a bioweapons facility just outside of Wuhan. Yeah, have they were apparently apparently, apparently he's a. Uh, large stakeholder in that, as well as this other guy, Fauci. But look it up, see what you, you'll be better at researching than me. But, um, and apparently he had a patent, a patent on the vaccine in March, which is quite, hmm. look that up. So if he had a patent on the vaccine in March, I don't know, it raises, it raises a few questions. And, um, well, and uh, what do you, yeah. What's your thoughts? Oh, well, there, there, there is a, 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 a what is a, the, the evidence is now emerging of an effective uh, treatment uh, for coronavirus hydroxychloride, which because uh, Trump has has talked it up and admitted he's been taking it taking it himself, the the media uh, with their their Trump uh, derangement syndrome, they've done all they can to suppress news and medical information about uh, its benefits. I, I'm not sure if you saw that uh, uh, these uh, uh, doctors 
um, what is that, America's Frontline Doctors. They held a press conference outside a, a Washington, D.C., talking about hi, uh, hydroxy Chlor uh, 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 chloroquine uh, that's yeah, been censored that, yeah. by Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. It's been deleted massively be uh, uh, be uh, because it uh, promoted it as a cure, which this is why I call it a, a treatment because well, what sort of what is a, a cure? You would say it's a, it's a treatment, but they've, they've demonized these doctors as much as they can. This was uh, shared on social media the credentials of uh, these doctors at the press conference, Simone Gold, uh, MD, Dr. Uh, Bob Hamilton. Uh, this is the one they've really gone after, Dr. Stella uh, Emanuel. She uh, went to medical school in uh, 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 Nigeria. She's the one who used the word uh, cure uh, for uh, uh, hydroxychloride. They're also attacking her because she's uh, quite uh, religious and has talked about uh, uh, demons and, and witches before that doesn't yep. mean that she's not good at medicine then dr. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah dr dan erickson he's the one who did the initial uh, video questioning the the social distancing and lockdown dr james uh, tordo and uh, dr uh, joe uh, 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 ladpo and this is the thing the the, the the sort of the the, the uh, corona or you say pro corona crazies they say listen to the experts listen to the doctors these are doctors but they don't want to hear about that and social media censors them yeah well that's i shared the um, did you see the round table on um london real 100 doctors no that one, Tim? no well, i shared i just shared the link for that because I, I watched it i thought that's interesting there were um a hundred doctors at once on a on a round table on london real and um so london real you know what that is you know it's a different different internet so it can't be censored and stuff so it's not yeah I, it does come to mind now yes yeah london real so there's a there's a a, a hundred doctors all at once on a round table and um the information they were giving does you know is it opposing to what you see in the mainstream so I thought oh, that's interesting, you know, and um, I try to be open-minded and not just believe anything. But it was interesting, and uh, so I just shared it to Facebook, but it got taken straight down. Mm -hmm. I thought, really, you really aren't even allowed to run. You're not really allowed to run a different narrative. And uh, I suppose they don't want people because there's some really stupid people in society, and they'll grab hold of that with all their life, seeing some doctors, you know, questioning the coronavirus and the response and the and the, you know, the severity of it. And then the real dumb people grab hold of that and now turn that into its corona is a complete myth and it's, it doesn't exist. Well, you know? with the <laughs> hydroxychloroquine, uh, 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 the, yep. the, the media were, you know, concerned that, oh, hey, it's, uh, 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 that it's gonna cause people to, to OD on it. There was, there, there was only two people who, who died from, what was it, a, a hydroxychloroquine OD, and that's because they drank uh, fish cleaner, which is incredibly stupid. But and nobody, uh, to my knowledge, when Trump talked about the the the, the uh, injecting uh, dis or a, a disinfectant uh, uh, into the skin as a treatment, he was sort of thinking out loud out loud to one of the doctors there. Nobody tried that, so. I mean, for all of the hysteria about Trump's medical information, there was only those two people who drank fish cleaners, which... I think he, I think he might be onto something. See, I've, I've been treating corona patients myself at home. So I noticed everyone using their hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is a big seller. You know, uh, people are making a lot of money from selling hand sanitizer. No, no, don't even make a joke about this because you could get the stream taken down. <laughs> well, if the hand sanitizer kills it, well, you can't edit this. If the hand no, no, this is live. Them. This is live. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Let me put it this way. I'll put it in a way that won't get you banned. If the hand sanitizer kills the virus on your hands, right? Which, which is, we assume why people, I assume that's why people are putting the hand sanitizer in their hands to kill the virus. I mean, kills the, the, the drop, if there's any droplets on your hands, yes. So, so kills the virus. If the virus is on your hands, the hand sanitizer will kill the virus. Now, if I'm diagnosed with the virus, why wouldn't I just drink the hand sanitizer? <laughs> because that that's only for getting rid of droplets. That's why. Well, it kills the droplets? 
on on your skin on your skin doesn't do anything it doesn't do anything else it's only for your skin but what i mean but what if i've got the uh, the coronavirus inside my body if the, if the no, 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 if the, no. If the hand sanitizer can kill the droplets on my hand, can't it kill the, the virus in my body as oh, well? Oh, I see what you're doing now. So you're sort of saying that because hand sanitizer has been so heavily promoted, then how come people aren't, ta uh, aren't taking that literal next step? And that's because people... No, actually, I, don't, I, actually, I actually don't know what I'm saying. I'm just, I really don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying if it kills the droplets on your hand, why wouldn't it kill it in your body? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> you sure, Tim? Yes, yes, sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you would seriously not recommend people do that. No, no, I wouldn't. No, no. Yeah, not me either. Show. Not on your show. Maybe on my Facebook, I might. <laughs> okay. Not on your show. Yeah, well, even if you do say that on your Facebook page, we'll, we'll still see how long you uh, survive uh, on, on Facebook. It's been good. Uh, uh, chatting with you, uh, uh, you, uh, time. you sharing uh, your thoughts as well, and we'll see well whether we can get out of this uh, second wave and this second lockdown. Because uh, if I, I certainly I want my own life back, and I know many other people want their want their lives back as well. Thank you very much, Shay. Thanks, Tim. I hope you stay in touch. And uh, it was really nice to uh, it's really nice to meet you. You're a pretty smart guy. I think I could learn a lot from you. So I hope you'll stay in contact with me. Yeah. After this, uh, uh, we'll yeah. we'll definitely do. And uh, I encourage people to uh, tune into your podcast uh, uh, as well, uh, uh, Warfare uh, Podcast, and and Lucky Lance on 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 Facebook as well. Thanks a lot, Tim. All right. Take care. All right. See you, mate. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.